affected. After repairs, turn on the ignition switch with terminals T, C, and E1 of the check connector still connected. Then depress the brake pedal eight or more times within three seconds. This will clear the diagnostic code. Key service points. The following are three important items to which special attention should be paid during servicing. Draining out of high pressure fluid. The brake line connecting the TRC accumulator and actuator is covered with a red vinyl tube as a safety reminder because the brake fluid is constantly under high pressure. Before replacing the TRC actuator or accumulator, make certain that you first drain out the high pressure fluid through the TRC actuator bleeder plug. Air bleeding of TRC system. After replacing the actuator or accumulator, Air bleeding at the accumulator or actuator is necessary. First, loosen the bleeder plug of the accumulator, then start the engine. The TRC pump will then operate, raising the hydraulic pressure in the brake lines so that air bleeding can be carried out. After this has been done, repeat the same operation with the TRC actuator. Disposal of the TRC accumulator. When disposing of the TRC accumulator, first loosen the gas plug and remove the high pressurized nitrogen gas inside. Troubleshooting. Now let's try to do some troubleshooting using an actual example. The trouble with this vehicle is that wheel spin is a little greater than on a normal vehicle when starting off on slippery road surfaces. Let's take a closer look at the actual conditions. First, we'll check the diagnostic code. The code is normal. Let's lift up the vehicle to confirm TRC operation. When the accelerator pedal is depressed, the TRC functions. Once more, it's still OK. Now let's try turning the TRC off. Of course, it doesn't work. So what could be the problem with this vehicle? Now let's take a closer look by first marking the tires. We'll examine whether the TRC functions for left and right wheels in the same way. When we look closely, we can see that there is a great difference in the rotation of the right and the left wheels. The left rear wheel's rotational speed is much faster. In other words, the TRC is not very effective for the left rear wheel. Now let's look at the wheels in a normal TRC-equipped vehicle. As you can see, the rotation of both left and right wheels is almost exactly the same. Now let's perform a driving test. Let's drive the normal vehicle with the TRC off. See how the wheel spins. Next, when the TRC is on, the TRC operates and it starts off smoothly. 
Now let's drive the malfunctioning vehicle. Let's make an actual comparison. At the top is the normal vehicle, and below the vehicle with the problem. Is there a difference in the traction? Let's look at this once more in slow motion. When we observe this closely, we can see that there is a lot of wheel spin in the vehicle with the problem. In other words, traction control is not very effective. We have just confirmed the actual situation. Now what kinds of malfunctions are there? Let's follow the repair manual and have a look. First, look at the problem symptom chart in the repair manual. The symptom exhibited by this vehicle is in this section. First, check the diagnostic code reconfirming that the normal code is being output. The code was normal before, wasn't it? Second, IG power source circuitry. This must be okay as the TRC system actually operates. However, just in case, let's check the voltage between the IG terminal and body ground. There is battery voltage. It's okay. Third, check the hydraulic circuitry for leakage. There is no leakage in the brake line. Fourth, the speed sensor circuitry. As a method of checking the speed sensor signal, remember the ABS sensor check function. Let's use this check function. With the sensor check function, the wheel speed sensor signal, stoplight switch signal, the neutral start switch signal, and the parking brake switch signal can be checked. In the case of the Lexus LS400, the TS, TC, and E1 terminals in the check connector in the engine compartment are used. Using the service wire, connect the three terminals apply the parking brake, and without depressing the brake pedal, start the engine. The ABS warning light blinks quickly in this way, indicating that the ABS ECU has been set in the sensor check mode. Let's try and remember the methods for carrying out speed sensor signal checks. First, drive the vehicle slowly, and when speed reaches four to six kilometers per hour, the light goes out once for one second, then goes on and begins blinking again if the system is normal. If a malfunction is detected, the light remains lit. Note that the same process is repeated again at between 45 and 55 kilometers per hour. During the one second that the light is off, the ECU checks the signal output by the speed sensor. Now let's do this with the malfunctioning vehicle. It starts off slowly, the light goes out at four to six kilometers per hour, then goes on and remains lit. There seems to be a malfunction. Let's stop the vehicle and read the diagnostic code. Code 74 is being displayed. Code 74 means that there is a low output voltage from the rear left speed sensor. Using an oscilloscope, let's confirm the output of the wheel speed sensor. It confirms that the output voltage of the left rear speed sensor is low. The reasons for the low output voltage could be either of the following or some other problem. 
the clearance between the wheel speed sensor and the rotor is too great. High resistance in the coil of the wheel speed sensor. Let's examine the mounting of the speed sensor. Ah, the speed sensor bracket is bent. The reason for the problem, therefore, seems to be that the clearance between the wheel speed sensor and the rotor was too great. When the speed sensor is replaced and examined once more with the oscilloscope, the output signals on the right and left are just about the same. There is now no malfunction. The example you just saw is a method of troubleshooting one possible type of trouble. It is an example of one problem that was not detected by the vehicle's self-diagnostic function. Normally, however, most electrical problems can be detected through self-diagnosis. We suggest that you attempt different tests of your own. We hope that watching this video will enable you to perform accurate and efficient troubleshooting by giving you an understanding of how to make effective use of the vehicle's self-diagnostic function and the sensor check function, as well as the repair manual and electrical wiring diagram.